Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Today we're talking about the Rheem hot water heater. This is the Performance Platinum Rheem. I've had it for about three, three years, three and a half years, and the other day I got an error code on it. So I called the good people at Rheem. They hooked me up with doing a self-test diagnostic on it. They came up with needing a sensor, and I'm they were uh, very fast in sending it over. I just got it yesterday. And we're going to install it today see how that comes out so putting this into self-test mode you hold these two buttons down until you see the word test and then you press the arrow up three times one two three and that takes you into the compressor and then enter two times one two and there's your sensor so that's your first sensor your second sensor and your third sensor now this is the one that was reading 285 I believe and it was totally uh, off the wall which was throwing my error code so that is how they ran me through the self test to find out what was going on here is a look at the sensor kit that they sent me comes with the sensor and three metal clips to retain it. And some thermal tape to, to uh, hold in the temperature so that it just not, reads properly. So it is a thermistor type sensor, two connectors. And yeah, I have to remove these three, I mean these four screws plus the screws on the top. Take this top panel off, move it out of the way. Hopefully I have enough room. That I tried to leave enough room when I ran the plumbing and then get in there and change that sensor. Be sure and turn off your hot water heater. Now my hot water heater is on number, number six and eight. Six and eight right there. And six and eight is right here. So a few tools I will be using. I will be using a magnetic tray to put the screws in, a test probe that test probe that will tell me if the power make sure the power is turned off. A small screwdriver to get into the behind there that you can turn at an angle. This is reversible Phillips and a stubby Phillips. I'm getting the first look down in here. This is the top of the unit. Here is where the screws were holding me underneath my uh, wiring. I couldn't see those two screws and the other two screws go right in here in the top of this support. Keep everything solid and keep it from rattling. And I have to go down to the bottom there, reach way down in there. I'm going to have to take off my watch and do some one-handed one -handed work to get that sensor off of there. So you got to reach in here. I had to cut the tie, a couple of tie straps. Tie wraps will have to be replaced. And there is a sensor right down here at the bottom that has got goo all over it, thermal, thermal tape to insulate it and there's really no other way for me to reach in there and have the camera to show you can't really get around this side I have to go down this side so you got to do the whole thing one-handed and we will see once you identify the sensor you can start to peel it off of the pipe that thermal tape is really good and it's coming free and here it comes now here is the sensor 
So you just have to squeeze and unplug. Plug in your new one. Make sure it's secure. Now there's my new sensor with my new clip inserted into the clip. And you want to make sure to put it on a clean spot of the pipe. You don't want that thermal tape ruining your ruining your deal there. Now mine was reading 258 degrees immediately after starting it up. So let's see. Can you see it there? Attached to the pipe. Now we're going to wrap some thermal tape around it and then close up that black tape. I decided to pull the foam tape all the way back so that I could get a good seal on this sticky tape this insulation tape so that it would be all the way from end to end. You don't want any openings. You don't want any air leaks. You want that thermal thermistor to read the temperature of that tube completely. Well, here's a look at my finished product. I had an extra piece of foam. I didn't like the way it was down there at a gap, so I put another piece of foam on top of the original foam, on top of the insulated tape. So I did put a rag under here so as to not be chafing the wires as I let the lid sit right here. That was something that um, I think help, helps out. You might contemplate that when it, it comes down to it. You are the best judge of what you need to do. I got it back together and I had the same code. So I called Reem and I had changed the wrong sensor. But there's one with gray wires that is close to the side. You have to, it's even harder to reach. But they, I called them up, they expedited one out here, and I got the new sensor in yesterday. It's up and running, all the codes are fixed, and it's working good. So thank you for watching, please hit like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.